I'm Noreen and welcome to my crafty corner. This week I want to go over some crafting tool essentials. Things that I always reach for every time I start to do a project. So let's go see what I'm going to pull out of my crafty corner. Alright, we're going to get started. I really just wanted to do a quick overview of things that I reach for every single time I sit down to do a project. Now I said before, I do not have a dedicated craft room. I am not fortunate enough to have a house that's large enough that I have an extra room for an office or a craft room. So we make do with what we have. One day I'm gonna show you how I set up myself when I wanna sit down and craft. But today I'm at my kitchen table. I think it's essential to have a work mat. And this one is actually upside down. This is my newest one. It's rather large. It is uh, 22 by 17, I believe, 23 by 17. But it is also reversible. So this is the black side, and then this is the white side. And I'll probably leave it on that one because it's better for the camera. But this is a, a self-healing mat. I also have these smaller mats that I get. Sometimes I just set up a TV tray if I'm doing something quick. If I have to stamp off some books or something, then I'll just take out a TV tray. But I always put a work mat down because you don't want to ruin your furniture, your tabletop. Of course, I can't ruin this tabletop. It's been through two kids and we bought it at a yard sale. So, you know what I'm saying? And I have a couple of those um, in this size. Again, 12 by 18. The next big thing that I always pull out is my paper trimmer. This one is a Fiskars paper trimmer. I think this is the deluxe version. I would have to double check on that. I will put a link for all of these things down below so that you can have a look and see which one you like. But um, I think these are essential. I like this blade type that slides along a wire so you can just line up what you need and then slice it. But some ladies like the guillotine style or the old fashioned paper trimmer that cuts uh, with a big blade. I like this, it locks in place so you can lock it when you put it away. I have a basket in my living room that I change out seasonally um, depending on if there's a holiday or something. So if I'm working on projects that are seasonal then I can just reach for you know, coordinating paper, stamps, and embellishments along with some card blanks or what have you. This is always in that basket and this I always pull out when I'm gonna start to craft. My Martha Stewart scoring board. Now I have two here. This was my first one. This was the original. It comes with a little bone folder. Please don't ask me to find that because I don't really use the one that came with it. Um, this is the original one. Again, well used. Rick gave this to me for Christmas. Oh my goodness, five years ago. Uh, then Martha got all swanky and she did it in a Tiffany blue and you know I had to have it but I have two of these because if my girls sit down to craft with me then we each have one we can reach for or whatever and if I have someone over and we're crafting together then we don't have to wait and share we we are able to just go ahead and and use it as we like my tape gun this uses double-sided tape um, I always have refills within reach as well, but you know when you're a crafter, you don't just use one kind of adhesive. So I also have this little bag. Sometimes if I'm just making a quick birthday card for somebody that I need right now, I won't get out the big tape gun. I'll just get out one of these little tape runners. I always have some on hand. And when I make a mini album for a gift, you know, a lot of times people don't know what those are for. And I always make sure that I try and explain it in the card. And I always give a tape runner with it so that they don't have to go out and buy one for themselves. And if they need an extra, they'll know what to look for. Glue dots. Adhesive is so different and there's different applications for all different kinds of things. I have glue dots in like four different sizes. Tacky glue, liquid glue, I have a box. Someday I'll show you. But today we're talking about essentials. So this is my grab it bag. I have a little thing of glue. I also have a two-way glue pen. These are great. This is a fine line uh, two-way glue pen. This Actually, this is a roller. This one you squeeze and it's like a little um, gel pen tip. It's like a ballpoint pen. And 
my favorite tape ever is the double-sided Korean tape, which is sometimes called Sukwang or by the brand name Score Tape, S-C-O-R. I have eighth inch, quarter inch, and half inch. And then these are the refills that I buy for my ATG. Pop dots, love pop dots, have them in many different configurations. Here's some uh, round ones. These are half inch rounds, but I also keep once I've used all of those up, I keep this and I cut it up and I use it as needed because that's still um, good to use. I have a little square one. This is a hole punch, but it's a heavy duty hole punch. It's called a Cropodile. It is made by We Are Memory Keepers. I'll put a link in the description box for you to go and look. But this punches a hole through just about anything. Balsa wood, chipboard, metal, uh, paper, cardstock, cardboard, and you can set grommets with this. You punch the hole with these. There's a large hole and a small hole, and you set grommets or brads with this. So you can in, you can put snaps in with this thing. It's like a snap setter, but it has um, a much larger uh, area of usefulness. It's definitely not a monotasker. This is a multitasker and every crafter should have one because this thing, even your husband is going to want to use it and that is no joke. This is a corner chomper also made by We Are Memory Keepers and it is in the crop, crop -a dial line. They make these in several different configurations and I'm going to show you how this works. This one is the half and quarter inch corner rounder. And what you do is you put the corner of your cardstock or paper in there and it's just gonna round it for you. Um, they also have different patterns. I have every one that they offer. Whole little punches, decorative punches. Decorative punches are a downfall, I have to say. I will be embarrassed to share with you how many punches I actually have because I never met a punch I didn't like. This is just an example of some basic circle punches because I use these a lot when I'm doing uh, thumb pulls. So you're doing half a circle like on an envelope or a library envelope or something like that inside your book. I, I put pockets on the insides of my composition notebooks that I alter and I always put a thumb pull because it's nice to be able to have something there if you're going to stick something in the pocket and you're going to be able to pull it out. These are just 12 inch rulers and I love them because they are clear and you can see through them. This is the Tim Holtz Ideology Ruler, which I absolutely adore. This is an EK Success Centering Ruler. Um, again, very similar uh, thing. This actually has little rubber feet on the one side so that it stays put when you're measuring. Pencils, and I usually have a pen or Sharpie marker in here somewhere. I have a hot glue gun in here. Bone folders. Now, these are what we use when we make a crisp, clean cut. This is my um, tonic. This is a Tim Holtz tonic. Um, this is a piercing tool. Um, I have all the tonic tools. This is a craft knife that I really, really like. It's nice and sharp. This is a... Uh, tonic distressor this you can like scrape things up with and make them look distressed so if you want to like take a oh i don't know if you want to scratch something up and make it look distressed then this is the tool you do that with it's got some stiff wire on there scissors let's talk about scissors now i love these these are tim holtz tonic uh these are the small scissors and they are non-stick and I love these. Um, I love these for just about anything. These cut through so many things. They cut through chipboard, cardboard, cardstock, paper, um, light metal and they're really great. I have two pair because I use them all the time and <clears throat> this one is like a nearly new pair that I got for Christmas. These are Martha Stewart's. These are the, uh, I believe these are the nine inch scissors and I love these things. I actually Everybody is going to have their own preference when it comes to scissors, so that's something you're going to have to make that call. I actually like to do a lot of fussy cutting with these scissors as opposed to these scissors. Um, these scissors are workhorse scissors. These scissors I like to pull out um, when I have to cut things out. I do a lot of fussy cutting from time to time, and these are the scissors that I use for that. And there's a whole bunch of tweezers and stuff down here. 
These are from Making Memories. I don't even think that company is in business anymore. But these are a reverse tweezer. So you, you squeeze it to open it. And then you hold it. When you shut it, it's going to hold whatever you are trying to hold. You're these doing um, embossing. If you do some, like put embossing powder on something and you need to heat set it, that's what you need to do. So I have that set. Again, that's the first pair I ever bought. And I think I paid $15 or $20 for that set of reverse tweezers. So I'm not getting rid of it because they're still super useful. Um, I got this set of Martha Stewart tweezers on clearance at Michael's and they were like $2.99. Um, because I'm a firm believer that you can never have too many useful tools, I went ahead and I got these. These are reverse scissors as well. Uh, scissors. Reverse tweezers. And then this is just a traditional pair of tweezers. And this is a pick-me-up stick. And this is made by Silhouette. These things are so nifty. This has a sticky tip on it that can be replaced. And if you're doing a lot of like rhinestone setting or if you need to pick something up that's really, really tiny and glue it onto your surface, that's going to help you do that. And I always keep these in here. This is just a set of, of stamps you know, that says happy birthday, thank you, hope you have a great day, a note for you, that kind of thing. These make real easy sentiment stamping. If you're going to make a real quick card, I always have those close by. And then finally, I have this. I bought this set of tools, like, again, forever ago, probably 20 years ago when I bought these, these tweezers. This little tin box has been with me that long as well. Not everything came in this box, but I use this box for a lot of different things. Exacto knife, I would never be without an Exacto knife. I have several styluses in here. Here's a little metal ruler that actually did come in this box. A set of another set of metal tweezers. Another little. Um, this is a pick. It has a little um, awl on the end of it. Another stylus, and then there's several tools in here that have interchangeable heads. This is actually a slot cutter. Um, like I said, I love good tools. And just like my husband can't do what he needs to do in his shop without good tools, I can't do what I need to do in my crafting without good tools. So let the crafting begin. Make something beautiful every day. Get creative, even if it's just for a half an hour. Get out some coloring books and some markers and color. It will... Just do your heart so much good, I promise. This is what I use almost every time I craft. I hope that gives you a great overview. I hope this hasn't been too long and 